I'm standing on a terrace roof of the Bruker Daltonics Corporation in Billerica, Massachusetts. This sort of a terrace space is typical of office parks throughout Massachusetts. What's different about this particular office space is it incorporates a planted area or a green roof. This particular green roof is only four inches thick. It was designed by Sarnafil Corporation in cooperation with Roofscapes. Its purpose is to treat and slow, to treat for water quality and to slow the rate of water release from this entire terrace area. It treats not only the water that falls on the plants themselves, but also the water that falls on all of this pavement area that I'm per currently standing on. All this water must eventually pass through the root zone of these plants and be treated on its way to the drains, which are located inside the green roof immediately behind me. This is an excellent example of what we call an extensive green roof, uh, which is a very thin layer of artificial soil which supports a, covering of, a ground cover of plants. In this case, all the ground covering plants that we introduced were sedum, which is a particular type of temperate or cold climate succulent, like a cactus. Uh, these plants are, for the most part, winter hardy and um, all flower at one time of the year. Right now, the sedum spurium in front of me is in full flower. Later uh, in, the, in the summer, um, the other sedums will come into flower. Uh, an interesting uh, uh, event happened this past winter. The uh, winter was particularly harsh and there was a particularly heavy snowfall of about 86 inches. And the result was that one of these varieties of sedum perished. However, it left behind seed, and already, uh, this is early summer, um, the carpet is beginning to, beginning to come back. And by the end of this summer, this will be a completely healed over area of sedum. Uh, so this aspect of this particular plant and approach, which is resilient and self-healing, is particularly well adapted to environments on roofs where maintenance is apt to be minimal. Now, the materials in this roof support a root depth of about four inches. Beyond me here on the pavement area, the water is flowing freely on top of a waterproof surface, and that will actually flow down beneath my feet towards the drains. And as it does so, it must encounter the roots of all these plants along the way, which will uh, remove uh, nutrients and contaminants and clean the water before it's released as stormwater. Because green roofs are such effective measures for controlling stormwater runoff, municipalities throughout the country are considering ways to encourage their use. In particular, cities like Seattle, Portland, and Chicago have already adopted regulations which incorporate the use of green roofs. The reason that people are excited about this technology is that even very thin veneers of vegetation, such as the one you see here, can have very large results. This roof has a threshold storm of three inches. That means for rainfalls containing three inches or less, it would, the, the uh, rate of runoff from this roof would be indistinguishable from a meadow down on the ground. In effect, we have made this area of this roof invisible from the standpoint of their environmental impact. Green roofs also offer other benefits in addition, in addition to uh, stormwater management. Uh, these include energy benefits in certain circumstances, and also this is a protective layer for the underlying waterproofing. Uh, the waterproofing in this case is a uh, Sarnafil PVC, which is impervious to attack by these roots and will last much longer with these plants on top of it. Green roofs have been used successfully in Europe for over 40 years as a cost-effective solution for a variety of environmental problems in a climate which is similar to our own. Therefore, we're confident that green roofs can play an important role in environmental policy right here in Massachusetts.